98FM. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Weekdays from 10 a.m. on 98FM. If you do, if somebody close to you does, or if you've even contemplated it, you'd want to listen to this next interview. What am I talking about? Taking steroids as a way of bulking up and making yourself look great. Because next on the programme, I have a tragic story about a Dublin dad of four called Mark Egan, who took his own life after an addiction to steroids left him in constant pain and suffering psychosis. Mark had started on steroids um, to try and bulk up and look his best for his wedding back in uh, 2013 to his long-term love, Sarita. Uh, But when he couldn't come off them, and he reached out to his GP for help. His broken-hearted wife said he was put on a specialist waiting list for two years before taking his own life last June. Now, several months later, Sarita has finally um, summoned the strength to speak about um, what happened to Mark and about Mark's passing and her belief that it was completely and utterly to do with the steroids that he had been uh, taking. And Sarita joins me on the line. Sarita, welcome to 98FM. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, Sarita, tell me firstly about when Mark, for the very first time, decided to uh, take steroids. And did you know about it yourself? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, it was a couple of months before our wedding day. He he was walking out at home. We have a shed out the back garden with some weights and stuff, and he was walking out at home. He was doing the usual, eating healthy, um, taking protein, shakes and stuff, but felt he wasn't really getting anywhere with that, so decided that he'd start to do steroids. Now, he, he said he was going to start doing them, just cycles of them, and then stop. Um, I was fine with it because I didn't. I never heard of any horror stories. Didn't realise how bad they could be. and needed to tea. We only really seen the good things, and that's how good they make you feel and how hmm. good of a body you get from them. Really. So uh, at, at the start, everything was grand. Um, he was he had a goal in mind, which was to yeah. get himself looking well for your wedding day back in uh, in 2013. And did it work? Did he achieve his aim? Yeah, he he did. He looked really well. He had um did did have a good physique about him and good body. But you do have to work on it as well. And um, with taking steroids, it, it, your body fills with fluid retention. So if you don't work out, you just blow. You okay, so he was well. working out as well. So, yeah, yeah. So when it came to uh, the wedding. He achieved what he wanted to achieve, which was to look well, to bulk up a little bit, uh, alongside the work that he was doing. Yeah, he did. Um, but he kept going then to achieve even a further goal. And that's the thing with steroids. You get so far and think, oh, I can do better now. I can, I can bulk up even more. They're making me feel so good. They give you so much energy and they produce like endorphins in your body and make you feel so good about yourself and and happy and you're flying along really when you're okay so them. after the wedding uh, um he continued to take them because he believed that they were a good thing he believed that they were making him look good and feel good yeah yeah exactly would it be fair to say that he he became addicted to them um well at the time yeah he he, he would be addicted he just said oh i'm just going to keep taking them and till i achieve the goal I want to achieve at the time um, and I was behind him when he first started, I was behind him all the way because I never realised how bad they could be in the end and um, so I, I was okay with it and it was only after a, a year a year and a half that he said I I, I need to stop taking these you take for three months so it, it it took yeah. that long, it took a year and a half for him to realise this is a problem this is yeah uh, uh, the benefits are, are the, the uh, dangers are far outweighing the benefits. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And he decided then at that point it was time to, to give them up, did he? Yeah, he um, he tried to stop taking them himself numerous of times, but the withdrawal symptoms from from um, is, is, is just awful. 
Um, like what? So, it, so it, when he made the decision to to give them up, what were the withdrawal symptoms? How did he suffer? Yeah, he would, well, from being on them, your endorphin levels and your testosterone levels are so high that you feel so good. And when you stop, they drop um, to a serious low. Your own body doesn't even produce your testosterone um, for a long period of time until mm-hmm. so your body gets back to normal. So um, you'll be really tired um, and would have severe headaches and um, nauseousness and um, just not being able to concentrate as well as you would normally. So what did he do then to try and get himself off the, the, the steroids? Um, we went to a local GP and he told the GP what he'd been taking and that he wants to come off them. He's finding them really hard. Um, they sent him for a routine blood test. He had the blood test done and he called back um, a couple of days later saying they needed to see him. They brought him back into the GP office and told him that his his testosterone was um, way too low. His um, hormone levels were... Um, not at the right level and his liver enzymes were too high and the only safe way to wean off them and the safe way to get all his hormone levels back level would be to see a specialist so they sent a referral for him then. Okay so taking the steroids was having a really bad negative effect on his health? Yeah definitely yeah. Beforehand he was as healthy as anything and would have never suffered them symptoms beforehand so... So, even though he set out to to take them in order to make himself healthier and fitter and everything else, it actually had the exact opposite consequence. Yeah, the only the only the, when you weigh out the pros and cons of taking them, the only good thing is at the, maybe for a short period of time they make you feel good, but it doesn't last like that. It doesn't last like that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when he realises the quite serious health implications of um, of taking them, he obviously tried then to get off them as quickly as possible. He did, yeah. Um, when the referral letter was sent to the hospital, um, we were happy about that. We thought he would get to, get to be seen maybe in a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. But um, as time went on, a year, two years, he still never got an appointment sent out. So he he tried his best to... Um, come off them as best he could but he, he'd probably get two months at max and so okay you say he tried to come off them uh, yeah. and I assume when you say tried he obviously didn't succeed did he not? No he, he would always end up taking another course um, basically to keep himself going because it, it was just too hard to function um, with how good they make you feel and then stopping them he felt it really hard to function without them So and he walked to uh, full-time job. He was in the same company for 13 years, never missed a day. Um, he was a really hard-working man, so he had to keep achieving that. He had to keep working hard, so he thought this was the only way to keep himself going. Um, uh, so, okay, he's, he's going through this trauma, this, um, it just sounds uh, awful, that he's, he's strung out on, on, if that's even the right word, but he, he's, he's got an addiction to uh, the steroids that he um, just can't crack, he can't get off them. And was he was he still working out during all this, or had he even given up on that? Um, he, he started to not walk out as much because it wasn't um, something that was important to him anymore. He would still walk out maybe twice a week, but at the beginning it would have been every day maybe sometimes twice a day. And during that time, did you notice any change in him, in his personality? Did he ever suffer from, for example, roid rage or anything like that? Uh, yeah, his personality would change. Like steroids most definitely do make your personality change. Um, it, in America as a person would have never been an aggressive or violent person. But um, I think people that probably would have that in their nature and then take them, it would make them very aggressive. Um, but he would, he did say himself that he felt um, he would snap quicker um, and he would overreact about in certain situations. It got so bad then uh, that Mark, as a result of taking uh, the steroids, started uh, suffering from psychosis. Yeah. Um, he started suffering psychosis really only the, a week and a half to two weeks before he passed. 
is when it really um and and what were those episodes like very they were very scary very scary to witness and he was terrified um in the fourth episode where he was um he was hearing voices he was telling me he was told that there was someone coming to take myself and the kids away and um, he wanted to protect us so as a caring loving father and husband that he was he wanted to make sure we were okay and he ran around their house frantically locking doors and windows and um, getting something to protect us with he told us all to go into a room he and he was he was shaking i tried my best to calm him down and tell him it's it's not really real, but he couldn't understand why I didn't hear what he was hearing and why I didn't believe him. Um, but he, you could see in his eyes, he, he was so confused and he, he just kept saying, I, I can hear, I can hear voices. I can hear people. Wow. Um, so he, he was, he became totally paranoid. He uh, yeah. believed somebody was out to get you and to kill you. And he just couldn't cope with that, couldn't deal with that, no. to the point that it got so bad and so much for him that he eventually, um, and this is a really sad part of this story, that it just got so much for him that he eventually took his own life. Yep. Wow. He did. Had he you... He was only suffering for two weeks with the psychosis, but he would have an, an extreme episode and then not... When he would calm down, it would take a good a good while for him to calm down. After you, uh, when he took his life, had you realised before uh, he died that things were that bad for him that he may uh, take his own life, or did you think he was going to be okay? I I never in my never for one second thought that my husband would take his life. He was the happiest funniest, most positive person anyone could ever meet. And even though you knew he was going through uh, trauma, even though you knew that he was going through a, a lot of pain, you never thought it was that bad? I never thought he'd take his life. I, I, I was worried. Um, I was constantly worried for them, for especially the two weeks leading up to it when he was suffering the psychosis. I was, it was a very worrying time. Um, I did like ring for an appointment with the GP for him to be seen and they did say like he could come down but Mark being the hard working person that he was he he said I, ha I have to keep going to work I can't miss work and um, I need I need to go into work and he he kept saying I'll be okay but at the same time was saying he was very scared he didn't know what was going on inside his head it must have been I can only imagine uh, devastating not only for you but for your uh, for your four children to lose Mark in that way. Well, one of the reasons you've decided to to speak publicly is because you firmly believe that it was steroids that killed Mark. End of. Yeah, um, I've been with Mark for twenty years, and um, before sixteen years, I was with him. He had never taken steroids. Um, he never suffered with his mental health or depression or anything like that. He was the most positive and um, happiest person and anyone that ever knew him. I had the pleasure to know him would say he was the life and soul of any party. He was never suffered with anything. Um, it was the day he started days was when he changed um, and then gradually just got worse for him until the psychosis was, was just something really... That he just really couldn't hard. cope with. Yeah. How have you and the children coped since then? Um, the three months um, after my husband passed, I I didn't leave my front door, and I I couldn't get up from my bed. I couldn't function. He was my childhood sweetheart. We were together from age fifteen. Every aspect of my life had to change because. I was used to having him there. He was my rock. Um, and my children were devastated. Their daddy was their hero. He was the one they always looked up to for advice. And he was the funny one in their home. He kept us all going. So 
it's been a, a hard eight months. And what? watching my kids cry themselves to sleep is a really hard thing. What made you finally decide to uh, go public and talk to newspapers and indeed to, to talk to us here at 98FM? What made you make that decision? Um, I wanted to share my story really because the, the grief and the pain that my family, myself, my kids and Mark's family, his mother, his father, his brother, his sister and my dad who was very close to him, we've all been suffering so bad. I wanted to to just make awareness of it so other families maybe won't have to go through what we have um, and for young the young generation of the young men that are in the gym and feel like they're not getting anywhere with it and think maybe I'll start steroids because everyone on them looks really good and um, I just want to make them think twice because it, it's, it could be just one in a ten chance or one in a fifty chance that'll happen to them but it's just not really worth the chance not worth taking that chance. And even before he uh, passed away, Mark obviously knew that he'd made a bad decision in taking steroids. Yeah, he he said it all the time. He said he wished he never started them. He called them the devil. He said they were horrible. And anyone that had asked him about them and asked him on advice on even getting them or saying they wanted to start them, he would always advise them not to. You would always advise them not to. Yeah. So the message you want to get across is to uh, people who are, you know, trying to bulk up, trying to get fit or, you know, thinking that it's going to make them uh, look better and all of that. Your message to them is uh, it's not as simple as it might seem. It's potentially life-threateningly dangerous. Definitely. Um, Definitely. As I said, the pros and cons don't weigh you. They do make you look good and they do make you feel good for a period of time, but there's serious long-term effects as well. Like there's, you know, malfunctions of the kidneys, the liver, the heart, um, delusion, depression, um, blood pressure, high cholesterol. It's, and you know, it, it's like anything really. Um, someone that, there could be 50 people in a nightclub and maybe... 50 of them would take an ecstasy tablet and one might just drop dead and the others would be dancing away. It's it's the same with this. With steroids, you could take them, maybe get away with the severe um, side effects that my husband had, but it's just not worth the chance. It's not worth taking that chance. It's not worth and that risk. Really, it's not worth that risk. Um, and the young generations of, of young men now that are in gym. So... Well, I hope I hope that message is heard loud and clear by and like you said, you know, when Mark took them at first, he thought he was doing a favor for himself. He thought it was going to help him. Uh, but sadly, it did the exact opposite um, and yeah. it ultimately destroyed him. It did. Yeah. Well, like I said, if that acts as food for thought for even one person listening to us now who is or is contemplating uh, taking uh, steroids, well, then that's a uh, job done and that's what you've set out to do, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's just there, there's a lot of awareness. We, we all know alcohol can be dangerous. There's ads on telly. We all know smoking can kill because it's wrote on the box. Mm -hmm. I've never seen any awareness for steroids. It, it's just kind of hidden behind closed doors and gyms and but if it's researched properly there's a lot of people that have been affected by it and it's just not worth it all right, well, I'm, uh, as soon as I'm finished talking to you, uh, Sweet, I'm going to be talking to another man who uh, says he lost everything himself as a result of uh, steroid use. Sarita, I, I, I wish you well. I admire your bravery for, for speaking about this. And like I said, if it, if it acts to stop one person uh, going down that road, which ultimately led to your husband's uh, early death, far too young to, to, to pass away, and leaving your, your four kids without a dad, if that message gets across that this is very dangerous, that this is not uh, the you know the the great thing that some people would make it out to be, well then I think you've uh, you've done a great job. So uh, I appreciate you talking to us, and thanks very much indeed for joining us on ninety eight FM. Thanks very much, Adrian. Thank thanks you very much indeed, Sarita. Thank you. Now, uh, Tom, you've been listening to that uh, interview yeah, with, 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 with Marie and Terry. I'm very sorry for our loss. Absolutely, yes. Now, this has obviously struck a chord with you as well. Yeah, I lost my three kids, my partner, and um, I lost the house. 
Um, I lost a lot of friends from snapping and roid rage. Um, I had a mild heart attack. I was taking too much. Um, you had a mild heart attack? I had a mild heart attack, yeah. I woke up in Tala Hospital with drips all hanging down. Wow. Um, I had collapsed in my kitchen and was brought straight to Tala Hospital where I was held there for a couple of days. And it, it, if you can get the message across to people, the young people, if you're 10, listen to me, you'll, 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 you'll bulk up eventually. Rome doesn't get built in a day. Don't use steroids. If, if, there's, anything, if there's anything you can do, do the protein drinks. Stay away from the creatine because creatine leads to one thing, water tension, and which is known to have a trace of steroid in them. And, and that's how you get the bulk off creatine. Like I said, a lot of people think that uh, they you, are, you, you know, that this is going to be good for them. That this nah, is going you to. Nah, you get you get a boost. Of, you get a boost of confidence. You feel great in yourself and all. But behind closed doors, really in your mind, it, it, it's driving you to do things that you would not normally do. And um, and let me ask you: I, Did you? We heard from I Sarita. Sorry, twice. That's what I was about to say. We heard from Sarita about the psychosis that Mark suffered yeah, from. Yeah, paranoia, the psychosis. You, you, it's there's, there's a lot, there's a lot there that that destroyed me. I, I um, I attacked my father and my brother, which I would have never have done. Um, I've raised my hand to my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, a couple of times, which I mm. literally regret. And um, who I have the three kids for. And um, I, if there's any questions you can ask, you want to ask, I'll be able to answer them fully for you. Okay, so like like we were saying to Sarita, you know, she spoke about how his uh, his intention was to look good, to look, to look good, good, and everything else. But it it's literally behind closed doors. Behind closed doors, your brain is doing twenty times faster than what I would normally do. Mm. Everything is you think over everything like if some if somebody says oh he I heard him saying something you would think he was talking about you there's a lot of paranoia in there the psychosis and then you get this thing where you see one side not being right and you say listen am I losing my it's the opposite to anorexia you see yourself as being skinny but you're not you're actually bulked and that's the addiction. And, and you keep and you keep trying to get bulk because you're looking in the mirror and you're saying that story doesn't look well or that story doesn't look well. You're always checking yourself and slowly but slowly but surely it's it's eating the marrow out of your bones. It's causing you twenty four seven stress. Where usually like a small thing you'd make out into a big huge thing and snap. And um, if you were to drink with them, surely you're guaranteed to have a fight at the end of the night. You know what I mean? You think someone be looking at your girlfriend in a pub, you turn, snap, and hit them. You know what I mean? It's it's. And this listening to you, um, and and I'm sure having listened to Sarita's story about Mark, have you had a lucky escape? I've had, I have had a lucky escape, but with consequences. And the consequences being that you've lost Brain. every, you've lost everything around you. I've lost, like I haven't lost them. Like I, like, I still speak to me kids. And I still speak to my ex partner. And um, when I separated from, when we separated, um, I gave her a while. I got into another relationship with, two, with a girl and had two kids, bro. And then I think when the fourth kid, I was taking steroids, which again, the whole thing started again the aggression, the snappiness, raising the hand. You know what I mean? That was going back six years ago. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and again, all because of steroid use. Simple as. All because of steroid use. Okay. So there's, there's so many different steroids. People tell you, listen, yeah, they make you bulk up. You put on a bit of weight and you get a nice shape and this and that. And when you're in the gym, then you see people all bulked up and you're wondering, how are they bulked up? And I'm doing the weights just as long as them and I'm not getting that bulk. Mm. And then you want to find out, you start finding out bits and pieces. Slowly but surely you're introduced to them. You know what I mean? It causes an awful lot. Of, it causes an awful lot of stress, aggression, snappiness, road rage, anger. And you how did I mean? you eventually get clean of them, uh, Tom? Um, my dad brought me down to Tala Hospital, 
and realising that I'd lost my kids and lost everything, I stopped going to the gym. And I stopped, I stopped, I just blanked all the numbers on my phone call. And even at that, I went through some amount of paranoia. I still suffer from paranoia and uh, depression today. But if, when I was in the forced relationship twice, I tried to hang myself. Uh, thanks to a fella across the road who had knocked at the door. And I'd seen me going in and didn't get an answer. Walked in and was calling me, Alan, Alan, Alan. And he could hear me feet scuffling. Ran up the stairs, ran back down the stairs, got a knife and cut the rope. Jesus. You know what I mean? Um, there's, there's, like, there's a lot that people don't say to you, what it does to you, you know? Mm. Okay, it's, so if I'm thinking of... Young people, 17, 18, 19 year old young fellas going to the gym and, uh, you know, starting to take steroids because they all want to look great and all that. What are the telltale signs for a parent, for example, that their young fella might be messing around with steroids? The telltale signs. The telltale signs. He'd be secretive. He'd be secretive in his room because that's where more than likely are his gym bag. Or even in a locker in the gym. He'd be secretive about certain things. You'll notice that he'll get an acne. Um, you'll notice that he will break sweats and get hot flushes out of the blue. Um, there's a lot of tell 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 there. You, his arms, he, he'll have lumps on his arms, or you'll see him, he'll have a sore bum from putting the needle into his bum and not doing it right. Um, there should be a like. Any parent that notices that, that, that thinks that the child is that they're putting on too much weight, he'll he, he know he'll start getting vain himself. He'll never be able to mirror. He'll be in the, the mirror all the time, mm. checking his muscles, checking his size and all. Um, there's there's uh, two places you can go into. You can go into your shoulder, you can go into the cheek, your arse. Um, with growth hormone, you go into your stomach and you need insulin. There's loads of different tell times to tell that, like, any, and like, it's just it's for someone like like I like when I was on them, I had an awful lot of problems. I was constantly fighting with people, arguing, and um, I was right and they were wrong. Even if I was in the wrong, I thought I was right. Mm. So it was a lot of aggression, you know. Um, so your message, just like with Sarita, is lads, don't do it. Because let's be honest, listen, it's, listen, it's listen, mostly lads, lads listen, that are doing lads, it. Listen, if you just work hard enough, you know what I mean. Go to the gym five days a week. You know what I mean? Isn't gonna bulk you up. You need to give your muscle rest. You know what I mean? Mm. Three days a week, and then three days off. Three days a week, three days off. Protein shakes will do it as long as you're doing the right workouts and the right cardio. You, you shouldn't need to go near steroids. No, definitely not. Tom, I, you appreci- I, mean? I appreciate you uh, talking to us, and I also appreciate um, Sarita talking to us a little bit earlier on. Uh, thanks for listening to Ninety Eight FM, and uh, thanks for sharing your story. And I hope that acts as a warning for many of you. And I know there are many of you who uh, do it on a on a daily and weekly basis. It can end in uh, in tears. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Weekdays from 10 a.m. on 98.